All right, welcome back to the Home Hobby Bench, folks. And tonight we've got this LWD QGS Automatic Distortion Meter Model TDM 1911. And um, I bought this probably over four years ago, direct from China, for about 125 bucks. And now, if you look on eBay, these things are running about 250 to 290, depending on the um, the supplier. I think it's still all direct out of China. I didn't notice any tonight when I was looking anybody that in the States that actually was selling one. Uh, when I bought it, it didn't come with a um, user manual. Um, maybe they just assumed that if you were buying a distortion meter, you knew how to use it. So I don't know. I have actually had found a contact email for this company um, around the same time after I received it and asked if they had a PDF copy of the manual and never got any response. So, eh, you know, not a big deal. I guess there's not a whole lot of buttons on it to figure out, but I thought we'd go through it tonight and compare it to the uh, Roden Schwartz CMU 200 THD measurement. So that's total harmonic distortion versus, you know, I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be actually measuring, but um, we'll, we'll just bounce the two off each other and kind of get an idea of how to use this. If you were looking to buy one, they're not very expensive. Um, you know, when you, when you look at distortion meters, even units that are 20, 30, maybe even older than 30 years from, uh, different brands, they're really pretty expensive, pretty pricey. So for, you know, for even still at 250 bucks brand new, it's not a, it's not a bad deal. So, uh, yeah, we'll go through it. So what we're, what we're doing is we're using the HP 89, uh, eight, I'm sorry, 8647A RF signal generator up there. And right now we're, we're generating a a one kilohertz tone at minus 67 dB. And we're, we're putting that tone into this AT555N. And then we're looking at the speaker output, which is going here. And then we're feeding that into uh, the uh, TDM 1911 here. And then we'll feed it into the CME 200 and just compare the two. Uh, also, just keep in mind, none of this stuff on this bench is calibrated. This is my home hobby bench. You know, at work, we have stuff calibrated here. I'm not worried about that. I'm just uh, tinkering around with old CB radios. I could care less if any of this stuff is calibrated. Now, that being said, I do run a GPS discipline oscillator on this bench so that everything has got the same 10 megahertz reference in just to keep everything on the same page. But other than that, no. I mean, for what I'm messing with here on the, on the bench, I could care less if any of this stuff is calibrated. All right, so that being said, uh, we know that this is not calibrated. We know the CME 200 is not calibrated. So they're not going to be anywhere near the same, I'm sure. But that's probably not the only reason they're not going to be the same as far as what we what, what type of signal we read. All right. So looking at this thing, we've got just a basic on-off bu uh, button here, power button. And we have three LEDs on the front. Uh, this one down here is illuminated right now. It just says no-go um, because we have no signal input at this point. Uh, my generator is off so we've got no output out of the radio uh, we do have a 400 killer i'm sorry 400 hertz led and we have one kilohertz led there that'll illuminate when those um when it detects one of those two uh, frequency inputs so um we're going to be looking at the one kilohertz tone here so now this side over here is our level input i'm going to set it at 300 because i already know that our uh, signal input from our speaker output of the radio is less than 300 millivolts. And, and then over here, I've, right now I've got this set at 3%. And we'll, we'll explain more once I turn on our signal. So let's go ahead and put our output signal from the generator is now on. And you see, if you can see here, I don't know if you can see real well, but not really. Yeah, there you go. So you can see our uh, signal level of nine here on the radio. And there we go. We're hooked up. Now you see we've got our one kilohertz filter is illuminated. And we're looking at a signal input of about over 150 millivolts. I would say it's probably closer to 160 millivolts. And yeah, so if basically we scale, say, to 100, we'll max it out and we lose our filter input uh, LED and we can go to say one volt and yeah so one volt it's showing so 
So this scale is one volt. So we're looking at the top scale and we're showing close to 200 millivolts there. So we'll go back to 300 millivolts. Same thing. We're over 150 millivolts. And then over here, this scale, we're at 3%. So that represents what I believe to be this bottom meter. So 0 to 3, so that's 3%. We're basically uh, looking at um, somewhere over 1% to 1.5% uh, distortion is what we're reading. And what I believe this bottom scale here, which is in dB, um, what I think this is referencing is so, uh, you know, when we talk about dBm, what we're referring to is, so if you have a reading in dBm, so like, for example, that up there, so right now that's minus 67 dBm. So what that means is that uh, 0 dB would represent 1 milliwatt. And then everything is referenced off of that 1 milliwatt at 0 dB. So I think what they're doing here, same thing would be for dB watts. So if you had a, if your, your reading was supposed to be dB watts, 0 dB would represent 1 watt. So anyway, so what, what I believe that they're trying to do here is they're trying to say that if we have this scale at 3%, that 30 dB would be this zero point, meaning that our distortion level is somewhere around um, 36, 7, 8 dB, I guess. I think that's what they're, what they're using the bottom meter for. Um, but anyway... We're showing that we're about 1 point something percent, 1.3% distortion. All right, so now let's take a look at that over here on the CMU and see how that compares. All right, so now we're inputted into the CMU 200, and you can see there that we are at a level of about 170 milliwatts, I'm sorry, millivolts, and our, there's our tone input. And then here is our percentage of THD, 2%. So the TDM1911 was saying about 1.2 or 1.3% distortion. And this is showing that we're at about 2% distortion. All right, so now, and then there's our SYNAD reading right there, which is, you know, that's pretty normal for a, a, a signal level that we're inputting into the radio pretty strong uh, synod reading of 33 dB. All right, so now let's take this um, RF signal generator. We're going to drop this signal down to one microvolt. All right, so now we're at one microvolt. And you can see here that we're still showing that one kilohertz tone. And we're now at about a 90 millivolt 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 signal input. And our distortion has jumped up to about 18% there, bouncing around about 18%. Now let's take a look at over here again on the TDM 1911. And we'll set this scale over here since we know it's 90 millivolts. So there we go. So we're, we're at about a little bit over 90 millivolts there. We're on the, one, the, the 100 millivolt scale. So we got about maxed out. And then we're going to change this 3% scale here. We're going to drop this down to 10%. Um, and we'll go to 30% because that's pretty much maxed out still. All right, so there's 30%. So that represents 0 to 30% here. And this is basically saying we're at about 10% uh, distortion, if that makes sense. Hope it does. And then if this is 10 dB here, then I think they're saying that the, our, now our distortion has jumped up to a level of 20 dB because uh, we're on minus 10 here. So I think that is probably the proper way to use this, interpret what we're reading on these, on these scales. Um, now, let me put it back over here one more time. You can see, so the disparity right now between um, the CMU200 and the T TDM1911 is about um, 8% as far as total distortion. Well, again, this one's re reading THD. Um, I'm not really sure if this one is looking at all harmonics um, outside that one kilohertz filter or, or something else. But um, 
yeah, so you can see the disparity between the two. The uh, signal level uh, matches up pretty well, but our distortion level is, is different. I mean, it's not drastically different. It's still within 10% of, of each other. But, um, yeah, so it, it's, it's fairly simple to use if you look at it just like that. Um, I don't typically use uh, THD or distortion for receiver sensitivity. I mean, you obviously could. I prefer using Synad. It's, it's, it's just my preferred method and pretty much standard in a, in a, a, a CB radio or a 10 meter radio alignment or even, you know, in, in our aviation comms, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I do avionics for a, a, a living. Um, same thing with... Um, uh, AM comm radios in aviation, they reference everything for sensitivity in, in a, with a SYNAD measurement for uh, sensitivity. So, yeah, so distortion is not really my game, but, you know, I, who knows? It was cheap when I bought it. I figured I'd go ahead and, and take advantage of it and buy it when I did. I mean, it is usable. If I, if I had no way of measuring SYNAD, I could definitely still look at receiver sensitivity of any radio using this it's a little bit different um as far as uh um you know the, the measurements are a little bit different but i could still glean you know the same basic information as far as how well uh, i you know i could i could definitely align a receiver i guess is what i'm saying using a distortion measurement versus a synab measurement but yeah i just thought i'd show that for anybody that was kind of wondering if they wanted to purchase one of these um for whatever use, maybe for stereo, you know, stereo use or some other type of audio uh, distortion measurements. Um, they, it's usable. It's definitely usable. And it's, it's fairly simple to use. Uh, so I hope that helps anybody that was on the fence about buying one. And uh, I guess we'll say 73s and we'll see you guys next time.